What's up you guys, welcome to another Meta Money video where I talk about Meta Pokemon and Pokemon Go to help you win your next trainer battle. Let's get started. Alrighty, so for this week, because last week I did bugs, this week is gonna be for electric because we're still in our jungle cup for the self league arena. And I'm releasing this video on Sunday because for the time you're watching this video now, I'm gonna have my jungle cup, my official rank jungle cup tournament. At the same time at four o'clock, I have my Entei Raid Day. So that is gonna come out on Monday. Jungle Cup probably gonna come out on Wednesday and uh, hopefully I can win. <laughs> um, so I've been shopping around a lot for electric Pokemon. So this is basically my top 10 electric type Pokemon that you should consider for Pokemon Go. The list goes down from 10 to one, what I think is not so like important to have for Great League, but it's like the one that you should definitely have for Great League. And we'll start off this list with number 10, Minum and Pulse. I kind of, I kind of left these two together because they're pretty much the same. One has a higher defense, one has a higher attack. They both have the same move set, but really, you should definitely have Spark and Discharge. And what I like about Discharge particularly for a charge move is that it requires very little energy and you can set them off very fast even with spark just a quick little rundown thunder shock is the best electric move for quick attacks and spark is next in line the worst electric type that you will want to have i don't ever suggest to have it is volt switch volt switch is like the worst pvp move for every category like at the bottom of the list is the slowest and just it's crap so as long as you have Spark without Thundershock, you'll still be okay. All right, so moving down to number nine, Zapdos. So Zapdos is a legendary Pokemon that may or may not be allowed in some tournament cups. But for Zapdos, you wanna have Thundershock. It is a legacy move, so if you can get that from somebody, that'd be good. And I prefer Ancient Power over Thunder because it gives a wider array of like attacks because he only has like Zap Cannon, Thunder, and something else. Um, I forgot, but they all take a lot of energy. Oops, I made a mistake. Zapdos does have Thunderbolt too, and in between Thunderbolt and Ancient Power, I would prefer to have, I guess, Thunderbolt first, because it is an electric type Pokemon, and it is an electric type attack, so I get stabbed with it. But if I, if you do have a Stardust for it, definitely have Ancient Power too, because it just covers more ground. So having those two as like a dual type move, it would be great. But it does cost 100,000 Stardust and 100 candy for it. And if you're drunk like me on the first night of PvP, you would have done it, because I did it for my Salamence for no reason, because I was kind of drunk. So Ancient Power is probably the more useful one, I guess you could say. All right, coming up to number eight, is Raikou. Again, it's another legendary because they're not that useful in comparison to other electric type of Pokemon. But if you are gonna have Raikou, it's not bad. It's actually way better than, than Zapdos based on its attack and it has Thundershock for one, which is a great thing. And what I like about Raikou the most is that you have an option between Thunderbolt or Shadow Ball. I, if you have enough Stardust and Candy, yeah, definitely get Thunderbolt and Shadow Ball because Shadow Ball is just a beast of attack because it does neutral damage to a lot of Pokemon. But even if your opponent is now weak towards the electric type, having Shadow Ball to do 100 damage, which most likely will be neutral damage, will definitely save your Raikou in a lot of instances. And plus Raikou is just really cool looking when it's shiny. Coming up to number 7 on our list is Legacy Raichu. Legacy Raichu has Thunder Shock and Thunder Punch because yeah, they just got rid of them really fast, but you also want to have Wild Charge. I highly suggest having a second charge move. I love shield baiting with my, with my Raichu. People just don't know if they can, you know, if they can take Wild Charge or a Thunder Punch. Thunder Punch charges up super fast, and yeah, it's just all around a great Pokemon. But I got some good news for you guys. If you do not have a Legacy Raichu or you don't know anybody that you can trade a Legacy Raichu from, you can get an Electowire. Electowire has all three charge moves to, to use, basically. It's not a Legacy move. And it has a higher attack stat than Raichu, too. It has an overall higher base stat than Raichu. For me personally, I like to have then a Shock, then a Punch, and its newest move that it got introduced recently, actually, with the latest updates, is Ice Punch. So basically, if you're going like in the Jungle Cup that we have right now, you're going to most likely go up against a grass type Pokemon. And so having Ice Punch that charges just as fast as Thunder Punch will definitely, you know, help you out like in the long run for coverage. If you want to save yourself some Stardust, I haven't tried this yet. I actually don't even know what's possible to be honest, but you can maybe trade your Elekid or get someone to trade you 
their crappy Alicate and try to get a charge move for Alicate before you evolve it to Electric Buzz because having a charge move for a baby Pokemon is only 10,000 starters in comparison to 75,000 starters for Electric Wire. So if you can find it, can I actually never tried it. Hopefully, maybe there's a possibility for it, but if not, then yeah, it's gonna cost a little bit. Alrighty, up next for number six or five, I forgot how many we're at right now, but we have Raichu Alolan form next. And basically, Alolan Raichu is psychic and electric, so it just basically combined the weakness of electric type Pokemon, which is ground only, combined it with psychic type Pokemon, which is bug, dark, and ghost Pokemon. So pretty much just combined all the weakness to one uh, for Alolan Raichu, which is kind of weird, but all right. So al although it has a little bit more weaknesses than Raichu, Alone of Raichu can learn Grass Knot, which will knock out ground, rock, and water type Pokemon, which is kind of like the core weakness of electric type Pokemon in ways. Um, mine is that you have to worry about Dark Ghost, Bug, and, and getting ground type Pokemon still. Like I said, it has a slightly higher stat and has the ability to learn Psychic, which also gives you more coverage in the long run later on. I like I like having more coverage. That's kind of like where I make decision, but you know it's up to you guys. Whatever situation you're in, really. But right, coming up next is Alolan Golem. Alolan Golem. That sounds so weird. Alolan Golem slash Alolan Graveler. It's kind of like on the same list because they're basically the same type and they know the exact same moves. They have the exact same type of weakness. But I'm just putting just Alolan Golem just for sake of simplicity. And it has a lot of weakness, like to fighting grass, ground, and water. Uh, but it knows Rock though, which is a useful for a quick attack and although it's not really geared towards like the electric type po Pokemon or like it doesn't have like electric you know a lot of electric moves to have um, having the ability to have Stone Edge is just really good and and also having Wild Charge will definitely back up your Alolan Golem you don't have to have a second charge move but if you do have the starters it only costs 10,000 starters for additional charge move so it's not too bad all right come up next to the most tankiest electric type Pokemon which is Lantern. Lantern is a water and electric type Pokemon. Lantern has one of the highest HP of the Great League in general, besides like a Blissey or a Chansey. But it can basically go up to 200 HP if you find the right IV. Its only weakness is grass and ground, and the moves that you want to have on it is just Water Gun and Thunderbolt. If you want to spend the extra starters for it, yeah, you can go with a Hydro Pump too to basically, you know, have that extra, like, muscle damage right there if you need to. And for Thunderbolt, it's not going to be charged. It does take a little bit more energy to charge up, but Water Gun is where it's, like, is money is at right there, where you can, like, just do some super quick damage with a Lantern. But definitely do not put Charge Beam. Charge Beam just sucks, too. Okay, well, I guess the list of quick attack for Electric type Pokemon is Thunder Shock, Spark, and then Charge Beam, and then Volt Switch. That was like the bottom, but Charge Beam sucks too. So you want to have Water Gun, it's just a better type. And what I like about this is that its only weakness is Grass and Ground. It's resistance to Steel, Fire, Flying, Ice, and Water type Pokemon. And like I said, it's just a general tank. If you don't have Grass and Ground type Pokemon to counter it, you're gonna like run into some issue. And it's gonna take a little while to be taken down too. So, it, you know, it's gonna do some, a lot of quick fast moves along with Thunderbolt, which is a really strong electric mood to begin with. All right, coming down to the last two Pokemon for this top 10 electric Pokemon, and coming up to number two is Magnezone. So Magnezone is amazing because it's steel and electric, meaning that its only weakness is fighting, fire, and ground type Pokemon. And it's resistant towards, check out the list right here, flying, poison, steel, bug, dragon, electric, fairy, grass, ice, normal, psychic, and rock type Pokemon. That is like 70% of the typing in Pokemon in general. The moves that you want to have for this is Spark, Flash Cannon, and Wild Charge. Flash Cannon is not the greatest. It doesn't do the most damage, but yeah, it's all right. You know, if you're going to have one or the other, I would say, you know, it's kind of tough. Because sometimes, that, you know, having that extra steel move does, does make sense. Up to you guys, actually. I'll just leave it up to you guys, what you guys think is more practical for your current situation. But do not put Zap Cannon on it, because Zap Cannon takes a sh ton of energy that you're just never going to use it. It's going to get knocked out before you can even, like, charge up one Zap Cannon. Alrighty, down to number one, the last Electrotype Pokemon that I think everyone should have, if you guys can find it, is a little rare. In fact, it's pretty, actually, pretty rare to find this, but it is a Magneton. Why do I choose a Magneton over a Magnezone? Because Magneton has Discharge. Like Pulse and Minum, like I said at the very beginning of the video, that Discharge is just a great overall charge move because it, does, it doesn't take that much energy to charge up. So along with that, 
Magneton has Magnet Bomb too, which also doesn't require that much energy. In comparison to Magnet Zone, Magnet Zone has Flash Cannon and Wild Charge, both needing more energy to charge up. Whereas for Magneton, it is so much more useful because of its low energy needed charge attacks. That sounded really weird how I said it, but the energy, <laughs> but basically the charge move doesn't require that much energy, meaning that you can set it off more often. Even though the HP is very low for any type of Pokemon to have, its long list of resistant type Pokemon makes it like, you know, able to take on the hits. Mine is not dealing with fighting, fire, or ground type Pokemon. Everything else you're okay with. So you only take neutral damage with fairy, water, and dark type hits. Everything else is resistant or you're like super weak too. But basically Magneton is like my personal star attacker for the Great League. I've destroyed all my friends with Magneton and I'm probably going to be destroying a few more people during my Jungle Cup. So I'll leave it off here. Magneton is a must have. It is a legacy. Just to let you guys know. If you guys can find it, good luck. I hope you guys can. I found it. Uh, thankfully my buddy Jin. He's like my original Pokemon buddy who quit a long time ago and like he has like a just a plethora of legacy movesets that like, you know, I could trade with them. But anyways, you guys, thanks so much for watching my video. That's my top 10 electric type Pokemon. Did I miss anything? Do you think I should add or take something off the list? Leave them down in the comments below and wish me luck for my Jungle Cup tomorrow or by the time you're watching this video, it's like going on at the very moment. So. I'll see you guys next time. If you're new to my channel, I do all things related to Pokemon Go news, tips, and tricks. I'm The Last Hot Sauce, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. What? Oh, Salamence. That's what I want. I want to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that one. Salamence. I don't have enough candy right now, though. What can Salamence learn? Uh, Hydro Pump and Fire Blast. But I want Hydro Pump. Because he is a dragon flying. And dragon flying have, oh, they have ice weakness. That's it though. And dragon and fairy. I'm I'm really interested in in seeing if. Good. Blow it. <laughs> Bam! Fire blast. <laughs> uh. Groudon.